It's no secret I love thrift shopping for home decor. Years ago, what started as a way to decorate our home on a very limited budget turned into a love for repurposing decor that already existed. I love giving new life to old, discarded items and finding unique vintage pieces that add character and charm to our home. Occasionally, I find items that would never be bought and used as is and need a bit of imagination to repurpose them into something beautiful. I don't like being on my own. I could use someone to hold. And I've been trying to fill the void. But my bed is getting cold. I was at an estate sale recently and saw the most beautiful, unique vases. And you could totally tell they were made out of cracked pieces of china. There were no markings on it, so I knew they didn't buy them anywhere, but they were damaged, so I didn't get them. Not too long after that, I went to the flea market and I found the most beautiful blue plate. I opened my car door to actually get my stuff out and one of them slipped out of the bag and broke and I was like I can't throw this away. I wanted to come up with a DIY that I could do on this plate specifically. I thought about maybe piecing it back together again, you know, that, that could be really beautiful. I remembered that vase. And so today we're gonna be making DIY cracked china vases. I go to flea markets, estate sales, and thrift shops all the time. And I always see china that is chipped. When I see them at the stores, I'm like, what are people gonna do with the china that's chipped. Obviously you don't wanna use it like that. So I went to the thrift store and bought the cracked china. <laughs> but what do you do with saucers when you don't have the teacup? It's not a bowl. You can clearly tell it needs a teacup. So it's not useful anymore. I feel like this DIY is gonna be a really pretty and we're gonna be making it out of air dry clay. So what you're gonna need is air dry clay and some sculpting tools to make pottery. You can get them in a kit a rolling pin and some dowels if you wanna make the thickness of your vase really um, consistent. Obviously gonna need some china pieces in whatever colors you have or you want your vase to end up being. And I have a glass of water just in case we need it when we're making the edges of our clay. I had to decide if I wanted to use air dry clay or clay you bake in the oven and you actually like hardens. Air dry clay is water resistant, it's not waterproof. And I really wanted these vases to be able to have flowers in them and put water in them. So I am opting for air dry clay because it is cheaper, but I got some vases from the thrift store for just a few dollars and these are gonna be the inside. So we're going to create a vase around this glass and keep the glass inside so that we can fill it with water. I actually got these dowels and this rolling pin at the thrift store as well. So this is a very thrifty project. I saw someone online use dowels as a guide for how thick their clay ended up being. So I wanna do the same. I have a kind of a mix of sizes. Since we're using the glass, I think I only want it to be a quarter inch thick. So I'm gonna pick the quarter inch, you know, dowels like this. We're gonna tape them down so that we can actually use it as a guide. Now we're gonna smooth out our air dry clay. I don't know how much of this we're gonna actually use. Couldn't tell you, I bought two packs, just in case. Two vases that I wanna make. We're gonna start with half of this package. I'm gonna start rolling it out. And the dowels will keep us from going down too far. I could sit around and wait all day. Thinning it out a little more. I feel like quarter is kind of. You lay easy on my mind. Like a candle, I just burn. Just gonna away. wrap it around there. blend the edges together now. I used to have a silver one like this that came in really handy. I don't know what happened to it. This one works just the same to kind of like smooth out the imperfections or the seam that we just made by joining them together. Now we're gonna bend over the top so that we can take this excess off, but I want the top to be covered. I don't want you to see the glass from the sides or the top.
Okay, now that we have our base, it's time for the fun and insane part. We're about to crack some china. <laughs> Granted, I already have some like decent pieces, but I, I need them smaller. And they're not they're not quite small enough. Ready, set, go. I've never cracked China on purpose before. Oh my gosh! What? Nice. Okay, this is actually a lot of pieces. And for some reason, I didn't feel like one plate was going to give me enough, but, cause it was just the pattern around the rim. But this is plenty of pieces. I might even have enough pieces to do the other with the lighter color, just to make it a little different. But I wanted to do one all blue. I feel like as I press the pieces of China inside, it's gonna ooze the clay out and it's gonna get bigger? I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Let's try this one. Sink it all the way in and then kind of like push it around. Wait, I love that so much. That is so cute. Things that are broken aren't always trash. Sometimes you just need to look at it with a different perspective or through a new lens. Instead of just looking at these pieces of china as dishes, I thought of them as a material and how I could use that material in a new and inspired way. I've done this with many thrifted pieces over the years, like a phonograph I turned into a vanity, damaged porch posts I turned into legs for our island, and waste baskets I've turned into pendant lights. It's amazing what you can create if you open your mind to it. the whole plate. I have just a few pieces of solid blue left, but I have, of course, like the center. The pattern and which piece I picked, there was no plan. It was just really sporadic. I just made sure to like mix the sizes because I felt like when I got to like the little ones mixed in with the big ones look really good. You can tell like this part is more like all larger and I don't think it looks as good. And the little pieces go into the clay easier. Because definitely by putting these pieces in here, it like squished out the clay. Gotta go back over it and make sure that they're all, like it's all really smooth again so it looks more finished, I feel like. Work quickly. <laughs> don't slow down. Don't take a break. Because it will dry, start to dry on you and just kind of like crackle a little bit. Like the clay will crack. So I let it dry overnight and I learned a few things with the first one that we did. I thought I smoothed out the in-between pretty good, but it kind of gives it like a, a bubbled look on the center. It's kind of like a push in and it, it has a lot of like, kind of like humps and stuff. Um, so I don't love that. So I think on the second one, I'm gonna make sure that I'm really flattening out the space in between the china. Number two, I figured out that I really don't like the white. I think it's too stark. I think when I've used air dry clay before, I used gray, and I knew I didn't want gray. It's almost like I wanted like a terracotta, but it also had to look good with the blue and white china. <laughs> so um, that's okay, you can paint air dry clay. So with pretty much any kind of paint, I have acrylics in like some off-white colors, maybe water it down even and not have it like super pigmented. Super cute, I mean imagine like, a, an outdoor vase that won't get rained on, maybe under a patio. I feel like that would be like perfect. But I just looked in my stash, I had Titan Buff Acrylic, a matte acrylic in off-white, vintage white, and matte in beige. I don't have much vintage white, so I don't know if that's gonna be. This is what the plate looked like before it broke. It's so pretty, I actually use it to paint. Um, I just think it's pretty to kind of mix paints on and it's really easy to clean. I feel like if we dilute it just a little bit. I don't want it super pigmented. I just want to kind of wash it with color. Let's try on the bottom. Just in case we don't like it, it won't show. I do like it better, but it's a little bit yellow. I mean, I feel like all of these are somewhat going to be yellow. No, vintage white. I mean, wouldn't that be a color that we love? 
I do feel like that's better. It has more of a pink undertone. Could always go over it with white again. I'm gonna try it on a little patch. I do, I do like it better. The white is like too stark. This gives it a little more feeling. And we can wipe it off the china. Obviously the paint isn't gonna stick to the china. I used to make a plan for a DIY project and if it didn't go exactly as I planned, I would scrap it, just start over, mark it as a fail. Then I started to realize that creativity doesn't fit into a plan. Projects evolve, ideas need space to develop and grow into something even better. So instead of starting over from scratch on a project, I allowed it to take on a mind of its own, making small changes and decisions throughout the process. And now I always end up more in love with a project when it's finished because it evolved past what I could have imagined or planned for. I've learned anything about DIY projects and projects in general, you get better with practice. <laughs> so the next one, we're gonna improve even more because that one's really cute. So this one is shaped a little differently. I found a vase that had more of a pedestal bottom and it was more straight at the top versus that one that kind of had a shape like that. Went off of what the thrift store really had. Only put the china on the flat part um, and leave this kind of like natural. I feel like it would look a little different and then obviously paint it because I think that the white is going to look even weirder with kind of like this kind of coloring. I've got my thing smoothed out already. We are ready to wrap it and break some china again. <laughs> this china is going to be more like the inspiration pictures. I feel like too colorful and light. Um, not so all the same color but it's just like I obviously wanted to try something different than what I had seen. Now this is a full pack and I did it just as thin as the other. I did it um, about a little over an eighth, so to speak. This one is chipped on the side here. So, I mean, we're not gonna use it. So might as well just mash it to pieces. No big deal. One, two, three, go. I did find out that I do like them smaller, so. I love the lighter. Imagine if it's like this buff kind of color in between. I think it'll like calm it down a little bit. This is fun. Like it's such a change in pace from my projects I've been doing for like the last two years. Like I don't just get to sit down and work with my hands. Do you know what I mean? I'm usually like on a ladder or with a power tool and the extent of my power tool is not a power tool at all. It's just the hammer so that I can get pieces small enough. I do like the smaller pieces the most. If you're looking for a project, we can just like sit outside and chill out with some like nice music or a Netflix show like I'm doing. Work with your hands, it's, it's really, really nice. I was thinking about other things that we could use the cracked china for. It would be so pretty as like a mosaic topper for a cabinet. I don't think that they would all lay really flat, so it would be a little bit rigid, but maybe like pouring like a resin over the top of it or like you know making it kind of like deeper so it's flat on top 
could be kind of cool. Let me know in the comments if you guys can think of any other projects that we could use the, the china for, because I feel like it creates like a really pretty kind of pattern. I think this one's pretty by leaving the bottom solid. It'll just be painted. I think it'll add some like calmness to the design. Okay, I'm just trying to smooth back out the top because as you work with the clay, you know, it starts to dry out. It is air dry clay, we're in the air. Um, you know, there's air all around. So kind of working on that before it completely dries. But I love that I did smaller pieces on this one that versus this one, it's still pretty. It's just not as like, kind of like mosaic or busy. The small ones add a lot to it. Uh, so imagine when it's like painted and it's not pure white, I think it's going to be so pretty. The clay is dry, we paint it after the paint is dry. Go over it with a sealer. Uh, I think it'll just help it like for life and it'll like really cure it and kind of s further stick the clay and the china pieces together so that it lasts a really long time. I hope you guys enjoyed this DIY project. This is just such a fun project to do outside. If you enjoy working with your hands, I think it's a really great one. I also think it would be great for fall to do like a terracotta colored clay and then pick china that has more like moody colors. If you find that, I think it would be like the perfect, really pretty pot. We are gonna be heading inside and doing some fun inside projects, um, but I am heading back to Texas just for a week. Check on things at the cottage. So if you guys want to have updates on the cottage, make sure that you're following over on my vlog channel because I won't be doing any renovations right now at the cottage. We're gonna pick that up later, but we need to go check her out for ourselves. We know she's doing okay because of my parents, but you know, I need to lay my eyes on the cottage. And we'll see you guys very, very soon for new videos here. I have some super fun projects and exciting announcements coming really, really soon. So stay tuned. I love, look how pretty that is. So special. This rose smells so good. There's also so many butterflies right now.